from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make, make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish, don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that, Je that Christ Jesus had. Uh, dear Lord, thank you so much for being here with us. We just pray that you would just continue being here with us and speak to us. And let us have lots of fun, I suppose. And um, let us enjoy our time here uh, with one another. And uh, with you, uh, thanks once again. Awesome. Amen, Jesus. Let's uh, open our Bibles. Or our pads. Or our, our pads. Or whatever you guys have. Oh, can you pass me my Bible? Where? Yeah. Oh, you're new. I haven't <laughs> seen you before. This is different than Hannah. Oh, you're new. You're, you're Hannah? No, this no, is Emily. Emily. <laughs> Not Montana. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Oh, verse 1 on the, on the NLT. Is this it? Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. I mean, in a different version so you can guys get a feel for it. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Let's, let's pray. Close your eyes. It's deep word. Dear Lord, we ask you that you come with us right now so we can learn your word, Lord. We want to understand your word, God, and we want to apply it to our lives, God. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to teach us, to keep us in mind, God, while we're learning your word, that we can, you know, feel in our hearts you talking to us, Lord, that we can understand how this can be applied to our lives, God. Not just a word that was written so many years ago, but something that's fresh in our lives today. And we ask you this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, it's, it's, uh, this is the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus got up and, and, and preached the sermon. He divided, and we divided it in three chapters. Chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Chapter 6, it's all about sacrifice. And, and I want to talk about today uh, the heart of sacrifice and this is very important because most people miss the God's blessing and it's so important for you to understand that here because a lot of times we want God's blessing so badly we want to feel this presence we want to receive his reward but we don't know how to do that and in chapter 6 it's, it, it talks about three things it talks about giving it talks about prayer and it talks about fasting. You know, it has a it has a, a section about you know, a lower section talks about the treasures of the heart. Do not worry, but I want to talk about the the upper section when it talks about you know sacrifice. Because all of them have a, a thing in common. They all talk about um, what is God expecting from us, and everything that God expects from us, He He gives us a reward. So God is not cheap. A lot of us are cheap, so we don't give, you know, we from our friend and he's over our house, we don't give him the best food, we always give him, you know, some people are like that. If you go to my house, I open the fridge. And it's very interesting, I preached this once in my church, and I, and I find it interesting, you know, our culture, Brazilian culture, the richer you are, the less people give. The poorer you are, the more they give. If you go to Brazil, and you guys have gone to Brazil before, you'll notice that the poor, the person is, the more they'll take the whole fridge out of their house and, 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 and all the stuff and they'll feed it. It's almost like they're happy to give you as much as they have. Now, you know, knowing so many people in Brazil, I've been to, you know, wealthy people's houses and, and, and poor people's houses. And as you get to the, the wealthy, they only give you what they the essential. What they have to give you so you don't feel like you, you're not welcome. And, and, and Jesus, when he got up to talk to these people, he, he saw their hearts. And it's very important to understand that when God looks at us, He doesn't look at us what we do, what we say. He looks at our heart. And He sees what is in our heart. What kind of heart are we showing to God? See, it's so important for us to understand that God doesn't see the things we think is important. You know, 
we go out on the street and we check out if the person has the right clothing, the right shirt, the right hat, if he's matching, if he's not. You know, God doesn't look at that. He looks for things that people can't see. Because he is there to reward us the things that people don't notice, people they're not aware of. So he looks in this chapter, and he, and he starts out, and in this section of his sermon, he says, Be careful. Do not practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. And he talks about, in this section, he talks about the things that are sacrificed. Sacrifice means that it, it has some sort of pain attached to it. So giving, he's talking about giving money or, 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 or giving things to other people who are less fortunate. And, 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 and that causes some sacrifice. You know, when you go to church and they give commissions, um, there's some people who want to, you know, make sure they're out there and everybody knows they gave $1,000 or $500 to missions. They have their rewards right there. They don't get anything else. That's it. Every time we put ourselves in a position to be rewarded by people's praises, by people's, um, 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 you know, that, that people are going to be in awe about what we do, right there is our reward. We can't have anything from God. And most people want that reward. They're, they want people to respect them. They want people to acknowledge them. They want people, but they don't have the reward that is supernatural, that comes from God. See, when we do things that people don't know about, that, 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 that people are, are not aware about, um, only God is aware of. In this passage, you know, he continues saying, you know, make sure that your right hand doesn't know what your left hand gives. And that's an idea that, that we shouldn't give things or, or do things that require some sacrifice that we have to feel like we are accomplishing something, that we are doing something and God has to do something for us. And, and the three things that God talks about here is about giving, about prayer, about fasting. And most people say, yeah, fasting, yeah, I understand that sacrifice because you don't eat. Prayer. Why, why is that a sacrifice? Because who prayed today? Before I was back now or no? No. Like a real prayer. Like we sat down and you told God, you know, hi God, I'm here. You know, remember me, the guy? I always tell God if he remembers me. I don't know if you guys do that. I do that all the time. Say, Lord, remember me? Oh, yeah. I, I always tell him that. I said, I do in that. case he forgets, you know? Like, God doesn't forget anything. No. But just in case he forgets, I tell him. I don't say, he's Pastor Alex, because God doesn't care if I'm a pastor. I say, you know me, Alex, the dude that you saved, you know? And I always tell him that. And make sure that we have established that. Because, because I know how many Alexes are saved in the world. A lot. I'm thinking about it for a second. I mean, I think about these things. How many Alex Silvas are, you know, Silvas in Brazil? You know how many oh Silvas God. are in Brazil? <laughs> That's like the Half typical... Of Brazil Silva. You know how many Guadalajara's? <laughs> no, like, yeah, just only one. Just, okay, let's well, like, 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 Probably I'm popular in Mexico. Yes, you are. Garcia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Anywhere we need to. God, God, God is looking for us to stand out, but not in front of everybody else. And it's so important that 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 this 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 approach that God is talking about, it's about being in secret with the Lord. Now, we see people in the Bible like like David, one of the greatest kings that ever uh, reigned in in. Uh, in, in, in Israel, and one of the things that, that 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 keeps us like you know wondering why God loved this guy so much is that he did lots of the things that we want to do in secret. He he worshipped God, but he didn't make it like a lavish thing. He was alone. He wrote songs for God that never were sung among the Hebrew people until he died. Today, you know, most of our worship. Most of our um, uh, adoration was taken by inspiration that David wrote. He wrote most of the Psalms. And when God went to anoint him, you know, went to separate him, to give him a special calling, to, to say that he was somebody, it's very interesting because he was a nobody to where he lived. And it, it's very important for you to see that. To where he was standing, you know, in a huge family, of eight kids and a father that you know left him in the middle of the mountain to take care of his sheep, and the, the older 
you know, gentleman, you know, all his brothers were near the house, you know. He was just like, you know, some outcast. And, and God in heaven, when sent Samuel to go see him, said, listen, I want you to go down to the house of, uh, 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 of, uh, uh, of, I forgot his name now, <laughs> his father. And he says, you know, I want you to go there, and I want you to do something. I want you to separate one of the sons to be king. It's a big deal. You know, remember when the king got married in England? Yeah. People were waking up at 5 in the morning to see the wedding. Wow. It's a big deal. For what I'm saying, they're ahead. You know, these people are, you know, freaking out over the wedding of the king. Imagine, you know, for us it's a big deal. Now, now you can see the idea of a king being honored. Because if we see a king being honored here on earth, imagine back then. So this guy comes in, Samuel. And when Samuel came, he looked like a, maybe like some guy from the mafia because he came with this posse. You know, with a thousand men and soldiers, he was he was a, a powerful guy. When you walked in, the first thing that the guy said when he saw him, "You come in peace." I mean, you somebody comes over your house with a thousand guys, and swords and and chariots. You go, "You come in peace," or we brawl today. You know what I'm saying? That's what the whole idea. You know, he came saying, "I come in peace. I want to see your kids. I want to see your family." And it's interesting because the whole family goes by and God is not satisfied with what he sees. Now listen to me. God is not satisfied with what he sees. And it's so important because, you know, after the first guy, I would have been like, this is the dude, man, look at that. He's like 6'5", you know, he's, the dude is stacked, looks like a king, you know, he's playing with a sword. I mean, the guy is built to be a king. I would say, Lord, this is the guy, man, look at him. It's perfect. It's the guy, Lord, and God is not satisfied. See, when God sees from heaven our lives, sometimes he's not satisfied. Because we're trying to impress not God, but the people around us. Sometimes it's our parents, sometimes it's our leaders, our worship leaders, or sometimes it's our pastors, or, or somebody in our lives, sometimes it's our teachers, and we try to impress them, and God is not impressed with that. And, and when God is looking around and says, no, that's no good, that was no good, that was no good, that was no good. And I can see in his mind because, you know, Samuel had a communication, contact with God. He said, what are you looking for, God? What are you looking for? See, I'm looking for a guy after my own heart. And, and Samuel's like, what are you talking about, God? And he says, listen, you, and like everybody else, you look at the appearance. I look at the heart. I look at the intention. I look what they're after. And when Jesus gets up to preach one of his first sermons, he talks about what's important to God's eyes. And it's important for you and me to understand that because sometimes we're so wondering what's important to our own eyes, we forget to ask God what's important to him. Isn't it true? I mean, imagine if you would pray for an hour and realize that the whole hour you prayed was meaningless because it didn't get God's attention. Now imagine you're in school. Think about it for a second. You're in school, and when you're in school, you're talking, you know, to your teacher, and you're talking and, and you're getting all this stuff, and all of a sudden your teacher looks at you and says, I didn't get anything what you said. Mm. And, and you I'd, I'd flip out. I what are you I doing? Yeah, what are you doing? You didn't understand what I said. But sometimes we do that to God because we speak to him in a language he doesn't understand. Because he sees our hearts. And he sees the intentions of our hearts. And in and, 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 and Matthew, he keeps, he keeps going. He says, so when you give, and he's talking about things that are sacrificed. When you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret then listen this is so cool then your father who sees what is done in secret reward you so imagine if everything you did had a reward isn't that be cool it's so amazing 
You know, you can set up something in your heart. Now, in the beginning of the year, I set up something in my heart. I set up an amount of money I was going to give to missions. I'm not saying guys go to missions now. That was something I did. I, I felt God burning in my heart and saying, you know, um, that we need to set up a standard. And I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell my kids. None of them. None of them. You can tell you. I just I sat in my heart. And so much was difficult to do that because it wasn't like I was giving like five bucks. I was giving a, a good amount of money. And and I didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew about it. But around like the third and fourth month of the year, God started giving me stuff. I mean, I was like, what is this? You know, people like my bank was started giving me checks back. You know, like the mortgage started, you know, it's like, what's going on? And I, the other day, I was just, I, it clicked to me. I said, wow, I didn't even figure it out. I was not letting, you know, my right hand know what my left hand was doing. I wasn't trying to impress anybody. I wasn't trying to tell you, listen, I'm doing this. And God started giving and blessing. Because there's a reward when we're doing it because we see a need and we see a necessity in our heart. It starts to become like God's heart. Because when God sees a need, you know what he does? He gives to it. When God sees an assessment, He gives. He doesn't ask questions. He doesn't ask if there's enough room in His bank account. He says, there's a need I'm going to help. And when we see God says, listen, it's not just what you give. It's how you pray. It's how you talk to me. And He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. It's amazing. God loves us in our spot in the corner. When like nobody's around. I like to pray when everybody's asleep in my house. You know, I don't like to go to church and pray. I don't like to scream and yell in church. I, I like to go in my corner where I can talk to God. And when God can talk to me. I like to see God, you know, when, 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 I, you know, I was, I was, um, when I was diagnosed with diabetes, I couldn't fast anymore. Because diabetes, you have to eat in like a certain schedule. And I spent, um, since 92, I fasted until 2000 and, I think 2010. From 92 to 2010, I fasted almost every week. Yeah, I've, I've gone through fast seven days straight, fast ten days straight, you know, fast 40 days to six o'clock, campaigns and campaigns of fasting for people and praying for people to get healed and stuff. And I couldn't do it anymore. It was a very big deal for me because when you're doing something for such a long time and, you, and somebody says you can't do it. And I'm, when I was talking to God one day and I said, why are you doing this to me, you know? You know, why are you doing this to me? And God said to me, he said, Look, listen, through your weakness, I'm going to show you my strength. I said, I can't buy that. That sounds cool. I tell him something. And I let God do it. And then one day, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I said, Lord, and I'm just, you know, it's so much easier for me just to fast. Because I know I'll fast, and you're going to do this. And you're going to fast, and you're going to manifest this. And then there's a, there's a youth, there's a guy in my church, and God told him, he said, listen, my servant can't fast. So your job now is to fast for him. It's amazing. And then, and, and then I'm, I'm in church and I'm praying for people and God talks to me and he says, I asked him to fast for you because I know you can. And I said, I'm going crazy. God, God tells somebody not to eat for somebody else so they can pray over people. And they can, you know, do things for this kingdom. And, you know, a week went by, and this guy was telling me, yeah, Pastor, just finish this fast for 21 days. 21 days? I was like, dude, 20 minutes straight, that's great. No food, no food, water, that's it. I said, dude, you're in. He said, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, when I started this fast, I started for me, and God said, uh-uh, this is not for you. This is for my servant. Do you understand that God sees our intentions? He sees our hearts. 
And a lot of times God can't give us stuff. He can't bless us because our heart is wrong. It's not pleasing to him. And God is not, you know, God is not after people who are showy. You know, I, it's hard for me to say this because, you know, I, I have gifts that God gives me that, you know, they show. You know, you can't really, you know, when God gives me a word to tell somebody, it, it's going to happen. It's going to be loud. It's, you know, if God, you know, I pray for somebody. I, I was in church, you know, a couple, about a month ago, and, and, and God told me to, you know, pray for somebody to get renewed in the spirit. And, they, man, that, you know, six, two guys just went berserk. And the manifestation of God. So, you know, when God uses sometimes it's it's loud, but God sees my heart and I'm going, Lord, it's not me, okay? I want to make sure that you understand it's, it's you, and I want to make sure that they understand it's you, and I want to make sure they understand it's for your glory. Why is God telling you this tonight? Because a lot of times we we want to do things so people will accept us. We want to do stuff so people will acknowledge us. And, and in God's eyes, that's great, but it doesn't work in His kingdom. What is God after? Our heart. He's after that our heart is true, that our heart is sincere, that we we're doing it for the right reasons. See, David was called a man after God's own heart because he did things for the right reasons. When he, you know, killed Goliath, he didn't do it because he was... You know, some strong guy. He was the smallest guy. He wasn't the strongest guy. But he was doing for the right reasons. This guy, this, this giant, was, was confronting the army of the living God. And when he comes to, to fight him, he goes, you come with sword, you come with this. I come in the name of the Lord. See, his, his heart was right. See, we try to do things and we come in our own name, in our own purpose, in our ideals, and for our... We forget that it's not for, about us. God wants to be able to do things for you. You know, you guys hear me. And sometimes I wonder if you're listening. Every week I tell you about testimony. My son is a witness. The, the weird stuff that happens in our house. He, he wasn't going to have a birthday. He wasn't. Yo, that was bad. See? See? We were talking it was, about that. I said, you know, son, I'm going to give you, you know, maybe 50 bucks, right? And it's your birthday, right? Because, you know, I, I said, you know, I can't even have, you know, he wanted to have a couple friends over, and I said, I can't even do that because you know, I'm going to type. The second I said that, yeah, that I opened weird. an envelope, and it was $1,400 in the envelope. And he looked at me, and he looked at heaven and says, you got to pray. He looked at God and said, God, you got a strange sense of humor. Because I had just said, no, I can't afford it. And I opened up and said, I guess I can afford it now. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, God doesn't work on our standards. See, I didn't have a, you know, a rich friend or a rich parent to give me 1400 bucks. But I have a Father in Heaven who sees what we do in secret. And He rewards us. See, when we do things to show off, we get a reward right there. But when we do our things in secret, God rewards us and we're like blown away. I was blown away. I was blown away. Because I was like, alright, I guess you want to give the boy a party. I guess you want to give the guy a nice birthday. Do you understand? God does things that we don't expect. Because we need to have our heart right. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do things your way? Or do you want to do things God's way? Because you could be doing over, you can come to services all the time and you can and you're gonna have the same results. And that person that does the same thing. And expects different results as someone that is what? Insane. Insane. Thank you very much. Hey. You're very welcome. Uh, so for us to have a different oh, yeah. result, what we got to do? We got to change the way we do things. I keep thinking it's going to change. It just doesn't happen. No. It's insane. Mm. I'm already <laughs> insane to begin with. You don't have extra insanity. <laughs> That's not true. So do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody got that? We yeah. got you. Let's pray. Mm. I got you. Sir. Let's, let, let's, let's pray. That's it. That's it. Quickie. That's it. 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 That's it.
we're changing our service a little bit so we can have time so we can, you know, hang out a little bit, get to know each other. You know? I want, I want to, I want to ask you a question. Do you have something that you really, really want God to do for you? Can you think of it? Don't say it. Can you think of it? Something that's so important. Maybe it's a parent that's sick. Maybe it's a friend that you know wants to commit suicide. And you want to see him stop? It's just serious things. And maybe, you know, it's not like I want a new car, God. You know? Mm -hmm. You see these people preaching in the street. No, God will give you a brand new car. You know? You know, you get your new car and you, you speed down to 95 and you kill yourself. That was great. And you're like, it was that? It was God? Why did you do that to him? No. But, you know, you can think of things that are important that you're like, I really want this. You know, I want to go to school, but I can't afford it. I want to do this, but I can't, you know. But I want you to try something different. I don't want to, I don't want you to do it your way. You know, because you, obviously, you've been, you've been doing your way, this hasn't been working. Obviously. Obviously. But I love your shorts, I really do. They're really nice. You know? I can tell. I feel Gaelic when you walk through the room. What? Gaelic. I'm sorry. That's Irish. Irish. Oh, Gaelic. Oh, Gaelic. 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 That's their language. Gaelic is yeah. the Irish language. Oh, Gaelic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I went through over. <laughs> but I want you guys to read. Now, what happened? What, what happened if you asked something for God and, and he gave it to you? How would you like? Would you freak out? I freak out. I go like, sir. I, I, I said, John, can I be dancing? I mean, you just I go, dance. Oh, I don't know. You, know, you, you know, dance like this. Like, like, no, 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 no. That's a little embarrassing. You know, we'd be like, I do, I do, I do dancing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. How would you? How would you react? Now, like, I'm, like, I remember when I was first I came to church. One of the, the coolest things that God was. I used to see people in church, right? And I used to fast and pray. Nobody knew about it. But I used to do it. So I'd see somebody, I'd pick everybody in church. Now, if I see somebody sad in church, I would sit there and go, Lord, touch them. And then when God touched them, I'd go berserk. And I'm like, yeah! and everyone's like, is he okay? And I go, I see somebody in the back, and I say, Lord, touch them. And it was, it's, 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 I was doing all this work and putting all this time so people could be happy in church. And I would do that. And I would be like, and everybody, nobody knew about it. And I'd be like, yes, Lord. Okay, let's, and I go no, the next week. I would, be, I would be like, you know, praying and going. I said, who, who is this week, Lord? Who are you gonna, who are you gonna touch this week? It's like bingo. It's like bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number sixty-five. Shh, you know, slightly less exciting. It's like the last, uh -huh. A little less, but the reward is is close. Exactly. You know. Oh, but you know what I'm saying? I thought you were saying bingo was like. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's something you need to see, guys. You know what happens if you go to work every day and there's no salary? What happens? You'll leave, right? Duh. If they don't pay, what happens? Leave it's not worth working, man. Yeah. Now, think about it. Yeah, yeah, you do that for all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But imagine we treat God that way. God is like, has abundance, reward, surprising rewards. Things that we don't expect. And we go there and we're like, you know, this is what church is like. I go on Sunday, I go on Saturday, I go on this day, and I'm good, I start, I finish, well, whatever. But there's no change, there's no reward. And that's not true, people. What has to change is our heart. Because when we walk in that place and God sees the heart is right, He starts giving us His reward. Now, I want you to think of something that you want from God. Ready? Think about it. And we're going to start applying what I said. We're going to start doing things like we're going to start fasting. We're going to start praying. But not just praying when we're in, in this place. But we're going to start setting time for God. And, you know, you know I, I tell people at my church that it, if it's difficult for you to talk with God, you take the phone, you unhook it from the receiver, and you put it in your ear and you start mm -hmm. talking. Because it's amazing, because people can spend three hours on the phone talking just because they have a little thing in their ear. So let's do something different. Let's take the thing off and start saying, Lord, how are you today? Bluetooth. Lord, thank you so much. You know, it's the same idea. We need something to hold to feel like we're talking to someone. 
Well, if you hold something to your ear and you feel like you're talking to God, that's called prayer, people. That's it. Whatever it takes to get you to talk to God, God talks back to you. And God start blessing you. And your faith will start increasing. And your trust will start increasing. And your joy will start increasing. Does it respond to snail mail? No. Uh, no, not really. Yeah, said, no, my but there's a cool movie not. about that. Is there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Message from God, I think it's called. Does it take text? Letters from God. Letters from God. Awesome movie. Letters to I God. Watched Letters to God. God. Awesome movie. <laughs> Letters to God. No, just stop it. Stop it. So the guy will do all the trouble okay. to name the movie. You guys get it? You guys get it? Get, get, get in your head. Get in your head. Listen, listen. Get in your head. Get this thing in your head. Now, you want to see this happen. And the only way you're going to be able to see it happen is if you analyze your heart and see how it is when you do the things that you need to do God will help you and it will bless those things that are important to you okay now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to there's a, I, I remember when I was a kid there was a song this is an old song you hear all the time I sing it to my kids. It's very simple. It says, change my heart, oh Lord. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. I want to be like you. See, to be like God, we need to change our heart. I, you know, I can wear a suit and tie. God won't treat me better. You know, I can have the biggest Bible in the world. God's not going to treat me better. But if my heart isn't right, God is going to treat me different. That's why your heart needs to be right with God. So He can treat you like a son and like a daughter. And not like a stranger. Because that's what God wants to do with you. Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, when we are here just wanting God to be different God you know we don't want to be these people that are you know have to every week promote something or do something to be seen by you God, or seen by others we know that if our heart is right if we work in our inside and the reason why we do things and and the intentions of our heart and, 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 and the purity of our heart. You will see us. You, you will hear our prayers. You, you, you will hear our sacrifices. You will hear the things that we give to others. You know, as, as a sacrifice. Your word says that we should present ourselves as living sacrifices. You know, approved by you. And we need to God to work in our heart and our intentions and why we do things. Because you are looking at those things. And when you see those things, you reward those things out of the riches of your glory. And you let us understand how much you love us when we understand what we need to change in our hearts. And your word, everything that we do in church is about being transformed in our hearts. Because your word says that our hearts they could be a, a, a tool to deceive us. Your word says that our heart is the, one of the most deceiving things. So we need to work in our heart so that is true, that is holy, that is acceptable to you, Lord. And what I ask is that as each one of these young men and ladies sing I ask you that, that as their hearts become approved by you, pleasing to you, that you start rewarding them. So they see how your word is so powerful and how your word can transform us and how your word, God, can take us from one position in life to another position in life. It may be a position of, of faith. A position of believing in you. A position uh, where we can stand and have trust. Even when everything goes wrong, we need to trust in you, Lord. Even when we're sad, because we get sad, Lord. 
that we can be able to trust and, and, our, and our eyes be to you, Lord. And I ask you, Jesus, that you bless each one of them with the understanding that what you're after is not things that they, the world sees. What you're after is not approval by men, but what you're after are people who are sincere in their belief system, sincere in who they trust, sincere in where their face, faith lies on, on a rock that is immovable, on a rock that makes us stand. And I ask you with all my heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus,